Now, knowing the importance of neuraminidase in the viral life cycle, many scientists thought that if one inhibits that enzyme and prevents this very last step in the cycle, one might be able to shut down the propagation of the influenza virus. And so a large drug discovery effort uh, was underway back in the 1990s, even the late 1980s, to develop inhibitors of the neuraminidase enzyme. And that was done by understanding the mechanism of that enzymatic reaction. So the mechanism is shown here. Here's a sialic acid and picture it bound to the surface of, of a cell through a glycan on a glycoprotein or, or a glycolipid. So the R group is the rest of the glycan or the rest of the glycoprotein. What happens during the neuraminidase catalyzed reaction is that there's a cleavage of the bond right here between the sugar uh, ring carbon and this oxygen. That's called the glycosidic bond. And what the enzyme does is it finds a way to make this bond reactive, so this bond is cleaved, and there's a transition state for this reaction in which there's basically a change in the hybridization of the carbon atom at this position, so that it goes from being what we call sp3 hybridized to sp2 hybridized, it becomes planar, and also a positive charge develops on the ring. And then that leads to the formation of this intermediate, and then water from the environment reacts with the intermediate to form a free sialic acid molecule, which then floats away. Well, what several pharmaceutical companies did uh, is to look at the structure of this presumed transition state and try and mimic that structure with these synthetic molecules that are somewhat reminiscent of sialic acid. For example, this compound has the sp2 hybridization at this carbon, similar to the transition state. And so does this compound. This compound has a positive charge in the form of this guanidino group. And this compound has a positive charge in the form of this amino group. These two molecules are actually now on the market as flu drugs. This compound goes by the trade name Relenza, and this compound goes by the name Tamiflu. So if you feel the very, very early symptoms of the flu coming on, you can go to the doctor, get prescription for one or the other of these, and try and prevent the full-blown onset of the flu. Or if someone in your family has been diagnosed with the flu and you're worried that you might catch it, once again, you might take these, one of these two drugs as a preventative measure, as a prophylactic against the flu. So this is a nice example where understanding the glycobiology of influenza led ultimately to the development of drugs to treat the flu. It's a very nice story.